Hello, everyone. Hey. Yay. Imagine Konnichiwa. that. Konnichiwa. Hello. Um, I actually had a thing. Uh, let me see if I can pull up the thing. There we go. Um, hello, everyone. It's Saturday night. That means it's time for the Weekly Dig. Uh, for anyone new to the stream, this is a live show where we dig into um, anime, old and new. Uh, I'm Brent. These are my co-hosts, John. Say hi, John. Hey, hey. And Steve. Say hi, Steve. Hello. So let us start our dig tonight by analyzing an anime movie that the three of us watched this week, The Tale of Princess Kaguya, which you can see down there. This is Isao Takahata's final film. Not just finest film, but final film. Um, and it's an adaptation, a very, very loose adaptation, of a classic Japanese fairy tale, the tale of the, the, the bamboo cutter. Excuse me. Um, uh, what exposure have you all had to this movie before this week? Not, not a look. Zero. Okay. Nice <laughs> look. I for <clears throat> always good to talk while drinking. Yes. <laughs> Definitely do that a lot. Um, so um, I'd seen it, but not that you know, uh, not that long ago. Um, so maybe a year ago, I'd seen this film. Um, oh. Considering it came out in, I think, 2016? Something like that? Yeah, 2013. Um, 2013. 2013, there we go. Mm -hmm. um, it, it sort of been off my radar for a while. Um, watched it, loved it. Um, and then we're watching it again here. Um, and it's interesting, actually, the whole opening credit sequence, because it's all of these um, just patterns of, like, paper, um, and, like, uh, paper craft and so forth. Uh, which I think is very deliberate, and I think is, is part of what makes this film so distinctive, is that it is so much a work of animation. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's an artificiality to this that I love, where none of the backgrounds actually go all the way to the edges of the screen, and has this lovely painterly, almost like children's book feel to yeah. it. Yeah. Um, which is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and it starts with the, the story of, of the bamboo cutter who finds this, uh, um, this young girl in this, this miniature girl in a piece of bamboo. Um, now, something I've been mentioning to, to these guys that I learned from Toshio Okada, the Ota King, is that originally, <sighs> Takahata had a whole prologue planned where he explained, where you see... Kaguya, on the moon, which is where she's from, which is the whole thing we'll get to, where she is sent down to Earth as punishment. Um, and she is overjoyed, by the standards of the moon people, because, uh, because she's going to be able to experience human emotion, basically. And we see little snippets of that later on in the film when we see like the woman... You know, on the moon, looking down at the earth, and Kagi is seeing that. That was kind of the, the prologue. Um, and so she had been sent down. The reason we know that is, A, it's like in information, but also on the poster, the Japanese poster for this movie, the title is The Tale of Princess Kaguya, The Crime and Punishment of Kaguya. Oh, you see, that would have been nice. Interesting. Suzuki yeah, that would have been nice background. <laughs> added to the poster... Because he was like, Takahata-san, no one's going to... So Takahata cut that out of the film because he's like, people will understand. They'll grab some context. They'll, they'll see how the everything's audience. going on. Yeah. And Suzuki was like, no, they won't. Like, it's, yeah. So he added that yeah, the poster. Yeah, like, oh, there's no context no. given no, in no, that. No, no, no. This is Takahata's <clears throat> problem, is that he trusted the audience so much. Um, that there's all sorts of stuff in, in his movies that just go way over the head of the vast majority of people, and we'll see some examples of that soon. Um, but that is the context here, that, that, that uh, Kaguya has been banished to Earth, basically. Now she's being reborn. Um, Makes you it, feel really flattered to be an Earthling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, this is your place of punishment. Wow, <laughs> exactly, thanks. yes. Well, that's a, whole, that's a whole thing. Mm -hmm. Welcome um, to the hole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> escapes impossible. Yeah, so I um, thought this bamboo little altar thing that pops up. Yeah, when I first saw it, I'm like, wow, bamboo looks like a lotus blossom. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm like, How very <laughs> Buddhist. Yeah. Oh, as we know, this movie gets very Buddhist. <laughs> yes, it does. 
Um, so his face is still red. Again. <laughs> I was say, my, my face is still red from being slapped with it, you know, <laughs> over repeatedly. Very much so. Should have watched, should have watched the Tenchi first yeah, and then exactly, this yeah. one to get the extra beatings. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so we get this and we, and we get a, a very slow and deliberate scene. And this is one of the things about the movie is how slow paced it is. Um, especially compared to like my neighbors, the Yamadas, um, uh, only yesterday, even Grave of the Fireflies, which is definitely a, a deliberately paced movie. I think this is probably the slowest of Takahata's movies, not in the sense that it, it, it drags, but just he right. really yeah. lets these scenes have breath, yeah. Um, yeah. which I really appreciate. Um, and it, it does I mean, ha- honestly the way that they're rendered, it's more than worth the exactly. Way, you know, <laughs> like oh, yeah. That's oh, the it. thing is that you could look at you, you, I could just stare at any of these screenshots for the rest of my life. Yeah. Oh, gosh, gorgeous. Um, and then he takes her home, and and now is the point at which I have to uh, say to to the audience. Um, um, in this period in Japan, children did not have a lot of modesty. Oh, yeah. So yes. there's a lot of shots in here I'm going to have to kind of skip past because there are kids in various states of undress because that's just kind of how things were in a very poor thing where you don't really care. A poor village. Yeah. Um, nobody's paying much attention to that. Um, and so... Um, well, think of all the children in uh, Mamataro. All the right. little kids who yeah. just run out and they basically just have like a bib oh, on apron, and they're naked. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's, that's it. Yep. <laughs> like, oh. Um, which we definitely get some of. Um, um, and so, um, uh, yeah, so they decide to uh, uh, adopt Kaguya effectively. Um, um, and we discover that uh, heaven is providing for Kaguya, um, particularly in the ability of her mother to suddenly uh, breastfeed. Um, yeah, yeah. I did love that moment where she just. Uh, yeah. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and did you notice? I love this. She's crossing a bridge. She's literally crossing a bridge when this happens. It's like mm, nice, nice, <laughs> nice thing. Um. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely skin. Um. And so, yeah, and so um, um, they're adopted. And again, we're getting kind of the typical story, except Kaguya keeps growing. Yeah. Um, which is in the original story. Um, but she grows very deliberately in this very interesting pace. Um, There's something that, that Okada pointed out, is that the film points out multiple times that she's growing bigger. And it ties into some of the themes of the film, which is a little odd, and please bear with me, um, I find it interesting that um, as soon as uh, Kaguya starts sort of exploring in, in things, um, these kids from town come to see this weird little girl. Little Bamboo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which they nicknamed Little Bamboo because she's growing so quickly. Um, and they're coming there to tease her. But very quickly... They all kind of turn, um, um, and they all kind of start, start playing with her and all that kind of stuff. And it's one of the things about the, the movie is that Kaguya has this sort of charm on boys. Any boy that interacts with her is immediately like charmed by her. Right. And it's one of her kind of superpowers. Um, you'll notice in the village, she only hangs out with the boys. There are girls in the village, but they're always on the sideline doing other things. Yeah. And she's hanging out with the boys. And every, almost every time Kaguya grows, it's because she has received male attention. So she grows oh. at this point when they're doing the little bamboo princess, little bamboo princess. Yeah. She grows. Um, later on, when she's going down to get Sanmaru and she falls on top of him, she grows. Um, when they're in the pool and she, she drops into the pool and they're like all looking at her, she grows. I'm not suggesting that there is anything creepy going on here. I'm saying this is part of who she is and what kind of her, her situation is, is by being from another world, Hmm. she is, um, having this effect on the men in her life. All the females in her life treat her basically neutrally. 
You know, th- this does not seem to have any effect on them, but the guys kind of tune in to Kaguya. Um, well, yes, yeah, got laser eyes. That's a whole other thing. Um, but yeah, that's the thing. Um, but it, it, exactly, it's not necessarily a good superpower to have. And it's, I think it's one of the, the, the themes of the movie is that Kaguya is the center of attention in a way that kind of warps the experience of the people around her. Not warping in necessarily a bad way, but definitely affecting things. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and has this, you know, lovely time experience. Is it, here's a good example where she's helping her father, um, you know, uh, do bamboo. And you'll notice, like, her sleeves are hanging down. Like, you know, they're three or four times you know, her size. Too big, yeah. Way too big. And then when she interacts with the boar, as soon as Sanmaru grabs her, she so, she's suddenly filled out the dress. Right? Yeah. So it's really interesting that they're kind of tying all this in. And this is one of the reasons why, as Okada says, um, <laughs> Kaguya has this, the tale of Princess Kaguya has this problem. Takahata is so freakishly good at animation and directing animation. And there are feminist themes in this film that are so clear that they tend to obscure all the other stuff happening in the movie. Um, like these themes of, you know, you're attracting attention, which can be a good thing or a bad thing. And that there is a certain amount of growth that as Kaguya is maturing, she is maturing into an object of attention, an object of desire. And that that has its effects. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, and then you just have more and more of this gorgeous stuff. I mean, obviously, Ghibli is very good at nature, and yeah. they're, they're reveling in that. Um, but this is very clearly, basically, this is idyllic experience. And here's actually a good example of that, when Kaguya starts singing the song. Like, she basically bewitches all the boys, right? Like, they just all stop and stare at her while she's singing a song. So clearly, there's something going on here. Well, um, I like the way the one kid's got his baby... Uh, sibling right, yeah. Yeah. tied to his back like it's a rag doll <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> which is a very specific, uh, a typical thing um, yeah. and more fault uh, to be clear I'm saying feminist in a, a broad sense I mean, it is, it's, a, it's about sort of um, how women are treated um, gender issues of you know women having to sort of bend their lives to the will of the men around them is a very clear theme of all this um, and as ultimately, uh, Kaguya's agency to say no. Right, exactly. Right. Um, which gets even further complicated, um, as we see later. Um, um, and so, yeah, and so here, the, the woodcutter also gets gold from the tree. Um, one blessing from heaven. Which, I love the woodcutter guy's voice. Yes! Mm-hmm. Takeo Chi oh, okay. was the voice actor that, that did Okina as the father. And, you know, oh boy, I just love the sound of his voice. I, I was listening to the English dub and I thought the same I thing. Did, right <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I just love the, yeah, that, that very mm, gravelly voice. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah. Um, um, let's see. All right. Oh, something else I wanted to mention. Um, so this is actually a great example. This whole scene is a good example of the difference between Takahata and Miyazaki. Is that Miyazaki would have, would have skipped all of this all the stuff about what the villagers are actually doing. Um, There's actually something that Takahata chastised Miyazaki about for Princess Mononoke, where he said, in Princess Mononoke, you never see how the villagers live their lives. You never understand how Iron Town is constructed, how they're able to get food, all that kind of stuff. Um, Because that's part, for Takahata, the realism of this helps you appreciate the characters and where they're actually coming, kind of grounds you in those characters. Um, I think it, it totally works here. Understanding kind of the industry of the village kind of helps you you feel about them. Which also gives Kagi you know, this this contact with this alien culture that she's been yes. dropped into the middle of. It's not just idyllic running around in the woods. It's oh, the charcoal makers, the bowl yeah. turners, these people that are living off of the land and the resources that are available there. And you know how does she fit into that as the bamboo cutters? you know, surrogate daughter. Yeah. And I like the fact that the, the work is not romanticized. 
you know, yeah. it's, it's viewed as hard work right. that work. you just do yeah. all day for, until you die, basically. Well, the woman who's, like, hacking out the bowl, she's got a bandage around her foot where, like, mm-hmm. pretty obviously she might have missed. Well, <laughs> like, and, and when Kagi's looking or at Or stepped it, on wood shavings, or knows? Yeah. You know, every time the, 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 the all comes down, Kagi kind of flinches a little bit. Yeah. It's a, it's like, yeah. She's holding the bowl with her feet, and, and you're just, like, going, ah, toe. toe. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. They call her seven-toed Marge, but she's a hell of a bowl turner. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Um, and then again, uh, gotta skip by some of this stuff, um, just for YouTube's purposes. Yes. Um, then you get a little bit of Grave of the Fireflies, I'll be honest, um, them stealing the melons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which again, mm-hmm. I wonder if is, is a little bit of a wink, wink, nudge, dudge, you know, you remember this from the, the movie. And the fact that this is clearly showing a very different side of it, where... Yeah, I was waiting for the, the complete butt whooping. Yeah. I'm like, oh boy, not no, no. <laughs> oh, that, oh, that came later. Right, yes. Yeah, but... <laughs> Not it. I thought it was this moment. <laughs> like, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. And well. I get the fact that you know, it's it's um, instigated by Kaguya, who has no sense of right or wrong about this. She's like, right. sweet right. melons, yeah. cool. Let's grab a few. Um, and he's like, okay, fine. Like, no one's gonna care. And then you see something. He's like, ah, oh, crap. And so they run off. Um, and you get this like really sweet moment between the two of them. Um, um, as he cuts it open, and she's just kind of curious. Um, and they, they enjoy this uh, this melon for a moment, um, and, it, and again it gets back to that that weird thing where it's a very intimate moment, um, you know, not in any inappropriate way, but it does right. have that that very you know sweet connection between two people moment. Um, and then that it is wonderful, indeed loving. It is a loving moment. It is a very loving moment, absolutely. Yeah. And that wonderful moment of the robes shooting out <laughs> like fireworks. Ah. <laughs> Don't put your face over top of it when you knock that thing open. <laughs> Very Ghibli moment. Yeah. Um, and and again, this is where I think that the movie takes this interesting turn. Where, um, as Morph is saying in the in the chat, um, there's this interesting distinguishing. So a lot of people when they in Japan when they see the movie, they complain that like all of the male characters are scumbags in this movie. Um, because they all do something, like, scuzzy at some point. Um, whether it's the father kind of pushing things on, on Kaguya, whether it's the emperor, who will get to him. Um, yeah. The five suitors, who are all, like, they want her, but they don't really want her. Um, um, to even, um, uh, the boy, who kind of turns her, and then kind of turns her back on Kaguya, and then turns back to her at the end. Um, but this is, uh, you know, uh, I really felt at this time watching through where the father is like, we are clearly getting this stuff from heaven for a purpose. And we can't just ignore that and leave her here because we know how that ends in fairy tales. Yeah. <laughs> um, so clearly we have to go in this direction. You know, we have to, uh, we have to treat her like a royal princess. Well, and also for its time period, you know what I mean? The father states later on, it's like, this is what every girl wants right. she, to be a princess. And, uh, mm-hmm. You know, thank God to heaven, we've we've gotten this, and here you are, and with the robes and everything. This is this is what a girl wants. Yeah, it's like, yeah, Dad, <laughs> I get where your your concept of that is, but maybe you could just ask her the question <laughs> as to what she wants out of this well yeah you see the the, the sad thing for the father that, that i got out of it when he's being when he started being given the robes and he cuts it open and there's the gold and he has the mission to turn her into the princess mm-hmm. and to you know he keeps going back and forth as, as the story says the, the the rare narration you get mm-hmm. where he's going back and forth to the capital to make the mansion and everything set everything up yeah, there was a then, lot of gold, of the, apparently. Yeah, Holy yeah. cow. That's like amazing. Every other bamboo seems just like, gold, here you go. I mean, I mean, I wish I could open up a six-pack at work and be like, ah, gold. You know, there we go. Gold of a different kind. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Anyway. Um, but the sad thing is, is that I think this is where heaven is preparing her for her eventual return. Because, you know, that's what, when you get, you know, towards the end here you understand that that's what she's going back to yeah and so and part of the the sadness of all this is that that's that's once she's gotten there and she's experienced this wonderful little life 
of running around and just being free and enjoying these emotions everything is from the, from the father unknowingly is trying to crush all that mm. with the tutor mm-hmm. and you know to get her to be the proper lady because this is what everyone does for the yeah. princess mm-hmm. and she's realizing because she's always asking question why am i blackening my teeth why am i doing this why am i hours i blocking my eyebrows? eyebrows yeah which was just was mm. mm-hmm. yeah but um, but you know it's just preparing her you know you know it's like heaven's going okay you're gonna come back to to this one day so let's prepare you for the coming back and ease your transition so to speak it'll be nice it'll be fine and meanwhile she's just like I hate this I don't like it at all yeah but the father you know puts on the white face and goes okay this is what we do mm-hmm. yeah um, it's also interesting thinking about this being translated into the modern world where you know th- these expectations don't exist right oh, yeah. you know if, if if these things not in the same way at least you know where if all right. the stuff came in it's like great I, that doesn't matter like we're not gonna you know we're not gonna change whatever you're still gonna grow up the same way um but yeah um no absolutely it's it's um and this is one of the things okada says is that th- this is a movie about um um people reacting to a very strange situation and kind of doing their best with that. Um, uh, you know, the, the motivations are kind of murky because of the fairy tale nature of it. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, quite honestly, for finding a tiny little person in bamboo, finding gold, mm-hmm. finding robes, nobody is flipping out. Right. Yep. You know what I mean? They're right. taking this, like, kind of pretty well. Yep. <laughs> and, and that's kind of the, the, the bewitching nature of Kaguya, right, is that that's kind of what she does. Totally. Um, yeah, and then the, the, versus burning her at the stake as a witch, and, right, exactly. you know, going completely <laughs> insane. Yeah. Like, everyone knows that she's you know growing at a fantastic rate. Yeah, um, but everyone seems fine with that. Um, not normal things are happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, so here's this where she's not normal. Exactly. So, yeah, so here's where she uh, she she lands on on uh, uh, on him, and you know, Sudamaru. Mm-hmm. And Sudamaru. Um, and again, he, his hands land in an unfortunate moment. An unfortunate spot, um, but again, you know, she grows up. Like at that point, like she, she clearly gets a little older. Um, so I think that is kind of the point there. Um, uh, and there's this joke in here that I feel bad that I think a lot of folks miss, where he goes, you know, I have this this feeling that you're going to go away at some point and never return. And it's this very dramatic moment, and she goes, "That's no, okay. I'll always be here with you, and everyone else running around in the woods." And you can tell it's kind of like, that's not what he meant. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> There's a certain you know, view in his eyes of, you know, oh, she's, no, she's not. She, she does not. Right. Went right over her head. Hey, come on. For all the anime that we watch, it's nice to actually have the Ace girl be right. the, yes. the obtuse <laughs> one versus the guy. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Yep. I'll be your childhood best friend forever. Oh, okay. And when I fall in love with another woman, it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> yep. um, and in that heart-wrenching moment when they they leave um, and they have to, to go away. Um, and again, I love how Takahata does this. When he puts it in dusk, it's these muted colors. Uh, we've had all this gorgeous spring and autumn. Uh, and now that's, that's changing quite literally, physically. Um, uh, and and they they have to leave. Um, I also appreciate the fact that you know they, they decide to leave, and like she doesn't change her clothes, right? Like she's still this kid wearing this you know, very simple garb. She's still barefoot, because um, that's just kind of you know the the, the reality they live in. Um, and uh, and off she goes. Um, and here's where, and again, it gets complicated. Um, this is not simply a story of uh, the father imposing things. Once she realizes what this place is, she adores it. You know, she plays around, she runs around, she enjoys the fact that they live in a palace and she has all these clothes. It's great. Yeah. Who wouldn't like that? Until she meets Tudor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the tutor. Um, Which I always found, you... I found it very interesting that the mother is... She dials into Kaguya as a baby, mm-hmm. as a mother. Yep. And dad is just so blissfully jovial, mm-hmm. insane, yeah. <laughs> not paying attention. <laughs> Mom is so grounded, mm-hmm. and yet she doesn't 
She doesn't step forward Mm -hmm. and say, hey, father, dial it back. Yeah. You know, we, we have this simple existence. You cut bamboo. I prep things, weave baskets. This is what we do. Why don't you dial it back for Kaguya and let us just, you know, go along and figure this out? It's like, no, she just she sort of gets not swept up in it, but she you, she feels always like an unwilling participant. Mm-hmm. You know, when she sets her little loom up in the in, yeah. in the little small uh, cabin mm-hmm. next or the little shack next to the mm-hmm. mansion, it's like it's you can yeah. see how grounded that woman is, mm-hmm. and how he with his stupid hat. <laughs> yeah, keeps, her, keeps knocking off of yeah, the doorway. Exactly. You know, well, and it's like he's just so far beyond, and she's so grounded. It's just like, oh. Yeah. Well, I think it's just I think it's just because that she wants not necessarily the same thing as the father wants for her, but sees the you know the need to, or sees the father's need to want the good things for her daughter, and maybe she's kind of going along with it unwillingly because she's, you know, maybe not 100% sure that this will this will not, not turn out okay. Right. Like, maybe this will be okay with reservations and, you know, and, and things like that. But one of the things I thought was interesting when they're leaving, you know, going back to the leaving part, the, the leaving of the house mm-hmm. and going into the, to the new house, mm-hmm. where Kaguya is told to put the basket down. And she's yeah. put the basket down and you get a really gorgeous view of that basket and what's in there. Yes. The berries, the mushrooms, all these wonderful things. And the fact that they had caught that pheasant and we're, and they're going to have pheasant stew. Yeah. And this is rich. This is what it means to Kaguya to be rich. This is yep. wealth. Yes. This is actual to her in her mind, wealth. And she's just like, are you insane leaving this behind? Why would you do that? It's Look enough at this. to eat Look all the effort this. made to get it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, look at this. This is this is this is a treasure right here. We get to have it. But then they go on, you know, of course, you know, the, the idea of what, of what treasure is, and, and then they go on and, and go to the house and then you have that ridiculous scene where the mother doesn't it's almost like the mother didn't even try putting on the like the face makeup, you know. <laughs> and it it's and it's just like, you know, kind of she goes like, I hey, I'm no good at this. It's just like kind of going, you know, more to a little bit to your point, John, is kind of like going, maybe she did that on purpose, I don't know, to make herself look clownish. Well, it also feels like, especially in this moment, I felt the fact that the both of the parents are enjoying the wealth. You know? Yes. Now they're like, oh, we get to be nobility. This is cool. Um, it's silly, but it's cool. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll do this if that's what you need to do. We'll paint our faces if that's, the, uh, that's what we need, need to do to, to enjoy this giant house. And Papa um, gets to wear a stupid hat. Exactly. Yeah. Um, like, no, and I think it gets back to the fact that um, that Kaguya, just by who she is, is um, in a sense pushing her father. Well, it's not because of who she is. Heaven is kind of doing it. Um, her father's being pushed to do all this, and the mother just kind of being swept, swept along. And let's be honest. I mean, th- there are certainly plenty of marriages where it's like, okay, we'll see how it turns out. You know, and we'll we'll just instead of causing a ruckus, we're just going to see how this plays out. Um, you know, and it, it, again, one of the nice things about it, uh, most Takahata films is that, you know, uh, there are no heroes and there are no villains in any in any clear sense. You know, people are just people, um, and they do what they do. Um, yeah, uh, and then you get this this the, you know the, the part of the movie you're like, okay, time for the montage sequence. You know, uh, time for the, the, the teacher being strict and Kaguya, you know, uh, playing around. And we get that to an extent. And then we get this really interesting moment um, where uh, Kaguya is learning the koto. Yeah. And her father comes in. And again, because she is receiving male attention, suddenly she is able to play the koto like a master. Yeah, that's right, um, and it's that weird thing that you know, whenever there's a guy around, she's suddenly reacting to that in a very different way, um, and and that is kind of one of her superpowers is that she's able to. I'm going to say this, you know, not. She's able to be pleasing to men, 
if, is, that, is that the right way of putting it? Where, she, you know, whenever men are around, they enjoy her company, right? They, 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 right. they can't get away from her company. It's, it's very interesting. Um, um, and it's like she can't she's, help it. She's very interactive with men versus sort of right. um, not as dialed in with other women like yeah. her teacher lady. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And again, it's not in a, in, a, in a pervy, creepy way. It's just the way she right. is. Right. Um, I also like the stylistic choice of her teacher. Yeah. Is yeah. that she looks like a, a period woodblock print. Yes. <laughs> like the way her really, head's yeah. shaped and her whole it's body. I'm like, well, damn, everybody else doesn't look like that. What's going on with this? She's also freakishly tall. Yeah. <laughs> the pear teacher. Mm. Yes, exactly. And again, it yeah. goes back to that just kind of this very stylized thing. It's great. Um, uh, so, yeah, so, so um, um, you get all that. Um, and then you get, and oh boy. I remember the scene when I first saw it when Kaguya is just sitting there, you know, being kind of sad. Um, and then the father comes in, and I love that the mother just goes over to the father and whispers at him, and I knew exactly what she was saying. <laughs> and just, you know, how Kaguya is, is positioned there, and all of that is like, oh, oh, that, right? Um, and but again, look how grounded mom is. Even though she might be, might have been enjoying having face painted and sitting on the mm-hmm. little platform thing, all the nice stuff's hung up, and she's yeah. cooking. Mm-hmm. You know, right. and dad's complaining. Why are you cooking? We have people to do that. It's like, <laughs> listen, you are out of control, buddy. <laughs> mom knows what's going on. Well, and that's the other thing is that you know. Um, Their alternative is for Kaguya to be poor for the rest of her life, and so they abs- I'm sure they absolutely see this as the best thing for her. Um, oh, on doubt. I mean, father says the right. entire thing. It's like, thank heavens. Oh, thank heavens. Mm-hmm. But when prior to them moving to the mansion, did mm-hmm. they see Kaguya sad? Right. You know what I mean? It's like right. she enjoyed playing with the frogs. She enjoyed running around with the kids in the in the uh, would you call it a village? Considering yeah. the charcoal burners move every ten years, yeah. sure. so the their community, whatever yeah. their community. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? There's not sad moments. Mm-hmm. It's only once Kaguya gets drug into this and she has to go through all the training and she's doing all this stuff to be, you know, a courtier. Mm-hmm. That you get her having sad moments, right? And th- the other side of that coin is, do we really believe that her life in the village would be unalloyed joy, right? Um, and I'm not saying that anyone here is suggesting that. It's just it's interesting that she comes here and experiences the sadness, um, which does not necessarily mean that her life back in the village would be perfect. Right. It's just, it means she would have had her own difficulties once she'd come of age. Right. Exactly. Um, but, this is a very well, extreme here's, thing. Here's the thing, though, is that she does get sad in one occasion at in the village and when she sings the song because she's singing right. the lyrics and they're looking at her and they're like, sure. what does that mean? Why oh, and she's crying? looking off from that. Yeah. yeah, she's crying because the lyrics are basically, I'm, you know, I will look back at, the, I don't remember the exact lyrics, but basically, I will leave and then look yeah. back and want to come back. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I can't. Mm-hmm. And then she starts crying because inherently she knows that She's she is not time. going to be there forever. Mm-hmm. And she knows that she is going to move on at some point. Right. You know, and then, you know, of course, when you're watching the movie at that point, you're thinking, oh, God, she's going to die. Right. And, you know, yeah, it's just like, well, you know, even in the sadness the of that of that singing, yeah. it's the sadness of of. It's melancholy. A rec- yeah, it's a melancholy. Yeah. It's, a, it's a recollection of things she had learned, but doesn't. She's, you know what I mean? It's yeah, like she's, she's recalling something that's going to happen. Yeah. So it's like kind of a weird yeah. scenario. Mm-hmm. Versus being in the mansion where she's sad because all this crap that's being put upon, and she there, there's nobody there. She deals with the teacher. She mm-hmm. deals with dad's wacky, you know, hijinks. And mom's trying to, like, oh, make God. some normal space. 
And there's nobody else there who's her age. She can't play with anybody. She can't do anything. She's well, stuck a little, in the mansion. There's the, the little weird, girl. Little, oh, the little mom guy. <laughs> <laughs> the weird little attendant girl. Yeah. Which, I mean, she seems very nice, but they don't, you know what I mean? It's not yeah. like Sudamaru and, and all the kids in the mm-hmm. village. It's like she doesn't have a collection of people that she can sort of bounce off. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, mm, yep. wow. Absolutely. Um, which is why I think, again, there, there is a... Um, very gendered read of this, of, you know, you know, no, this is what you're going to do. I don't care if it sucks. This yeah. is what you have to do because that's what a proper lady does. Um, Which would have been a time appropriate thing. Absolutely. Like, for a girl being prepared for court. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally. Um, sadly. Um, and boy, didn't that suck. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Um, and then, of course, she rebels. Um, she gets her name. By Walter Matthau, which is very nice. Um, <laughs> the style of his face, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I, I love it because it's just so stylized. It is so. Yeah, you know, like that shot. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. Well, and, and again. See that coming out of a dark alley at you. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I feel like I've seen that, you know, painted somewhere, you know, on a, on a woodblock print. It's wonderful. Um, um, and. And again, you get this this interesting moment where Kaguya has been nothing but um, uh, rebellion, but as soon as she has to, you know, do this thing for for this guy, suddenly she's all deportment. She everything is perfect and right, and she says all the right things, um, and he gives her that the name of Kaguya. She even lays her kimono out pretty well. I mean, the teacher yeah. still has to, like, fix a corner right. of it. <laughs> but, for the most part, she's, she like, 90% clearly... spot on to mm-hmm. sitting and getting the koto ready. Yep. Yeah. She, she knows what she's doing. Um... How many layers are on that kimono? Oh, God. Holy I mean, it's crap. typically seven, I know. Holy. Which would be traditional number. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were thin layers, in fairness, but still. Yeah. Just keeping um, all that kind of going in the same direction and not be like, yeah, off shoulder and mm-hmm. do all this stuff. Yeah, screw it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like that, dressing her. Holy. Yeah. And they're all wearing kimono. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, totally. Um, and yeah, with get... open flame on little, pi- oh, on it's little great. very spindly pillars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, wow. It's... <laughs> what could go wrong? Yeah. Uh, Lots um... of fire. And, and again, this is what fire I love about this film. You know, that little spindly pillar thing, that is what? 11 lines? You know, of just brush stroke, brush stroke, brush right. stroke, brush stroke. Yep. You know, it's such a simple thing, but every line's perfect. Yeah. It, you know exactly what that is, which is so little, not so little effort. So so little, you know, drawing there. It's amazing. Um, uh, and then you get her party, her coming out party, her big exciting coming out party. Um, where all these guys show up, um, and she has to stay alone. Um, that you do, you wouldn't let a, you know, a young girl mingle with all of these, these people. Drunken dudes. No. Yeah. How, how, how dare you? Um, and so of course she's bored out of her mind. Um, and you see the entertainers come in and start to entertain everybody. Um, and then you get this moment where, um... Somebody says, you know, well, we should see her. We, we should see this, this, this girl. And her father says no. And it should be noted, again, she gets angry when he says maybe she's ugly. Yeah. And I, that to me was, you know, when I kind of was saying, was like, uh, that, that's the evidence right there of this whole theory. It's that, yeah, like she's tuned into all that stuff unconsciously. Um... And you get this sequence. Holy crap. One of the most beautiful yeah. pieces of animation I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where she is cast into darkness, literally. Um, she breaks the, the, the plate. Now, the storyboards make it very clear in this shot. This is like taking a ceramic bowl and cracking it with your, your thumb. This is, yeah. this is superhuman no, strength human here. Strength. Yeah. Um, and, like, she is... Busting through doors and walls like this, she's hulking out right now. Um, as she, yeah, I love that shot of her hair. Oh, it's where great. it's just the chaotic mm-hmm. flow of emotion. It's this very chaotic sequence as she, you know, runs to the moon, 
also, fly me to the moon. Oh. Um, gotta say it. Um, wow. And we get this crazy sequence. Loved it. Of all of these brush strokes, all of these things, all of her running through all of this. And you'll notice, let me see if I can get a shot of it. Um, near the end, she is literally on all fours. You know, scrambling through this. Yeah. She's become almost animalian in this. Um, as she's just trying to get away. Um, and then she comes back to the village, sees all this, um, sees there's a new um, uh, family in her, in her home. Yeah. Uh, no and dialogue. I think she's a beggar. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Let's bring out a little bowl for her. Because um, she doesn't like this wild girl who came out of the woods. Yeah. Um, she crosses the bridge. Um, and then learns from the charcoal maker that you know, everyone comes back and, you know, yeah. in and out. Um, but they all left. They won't be back for 10 years. Yeah. Like, oh. mm -hmm. Um, and then he gives her that little, you know, little line about renewal, which is important. Um, that, you know, everything comes back. It'll all be fine. Um, um, and she is so despondent. You know, she goes out. Um, and she just collapses in the snow. Right. And, and dies. Yeah, I was, I was like, what? Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. Hold on. Yep. This doesn't want how it's supposed to end. Yeah. Hey, man, um, we still got another hour. What the heck? Yeah. Exactly. What? Oh, yeah. This is what I love about um, Takahata. Because I'm about to lay something on you. Because um, she then wakes back up in her, in her thing. And it was all a dream. Except it wasn't. Or was it? Yeah. No. Takahata says in his storyboards, she dies at this point. She just died. Because what we see gathering around her are the moon fairies. Yeah. Yeah. With, who rewind time. Those are the words in the storyboard. Because we are not supposed to know that in context. Exactly, yes. <clears throat> um, wow. Because the moon... Okay. Thanks, Dr. Otter. Oh, see, here's the thing. You know how the moon is a rabbit pounding rice? Yeah. Right. Originally... Soggy and the mochi, yeah. Originally, it wasn't rice. They were pounding the medicine of immortality. Okay, I'd heard that. Thus, the audience should realize that everybody from the moon is immortal, and so Kagi is not allowed to die. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Takahata expects of his audience, is that they will connect all those pieces. Wow. And understand that, that they are literally rewinding time so that so Kaguya doesn't have So she doesn't die. She doesn't die. Um, but, you know, wow. you know she's, okay. she's, she broke it. Like, it, it happened, but it didn't happen. So she has both of them very simultaneously. Yeah. Wow. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's all so obvious. Um... You know, Takahata just stopped treating us like this. Um, now, does it, doesn't the immortality medicine come from Chinese folklore? I think so, yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. so like, the pounding mochi is Japanese later. Yeah, it's just Chinese kind of initially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you know all that, right? You remember all that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just have to carry my world encyclopedia of everything yeah, knowledge yeah, when knowledge. I go to see these films. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Let me see. Uh, um, what page is oh, that? Oh, that was. So, yeah. so Okada had this thing about um, the humor in the movie, uh, which is not particularly humorous moments. Um, um, uh, but stuff like, you know, the, the, the thing uh, earlier on. And he said, uh, he said, I went back and watched the documentary of, of Princess Kaguya, and I noticed when they're interviewing Takahata, it's in like his study, and you can see all these books behind him. And there are all these books on humor, on like British humor and Edo era humor and all that. And Okada said, the poor man, he clearly studied humor. And the best he could do with that was Grave of the Fireflies and the Tale of Princess Kaguya. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um... Hilarity. Um, yeah. Um, um, and so then we move into, into the, the uh, part of the movie that is the um, kind of central part of the original story of all these suitors that come to Kaguya. Um, originally, they come one at a time. Um, so one yeah. comes, and then she sends him away. Another one comes and sends her, him away. And they kind of condense it all down, you know, for this. 
uh, they all come at once. Um, um, and again, this is meant to be very silly, very humorous, but very, very, very goofy. Um, as her her namer, you know, starts spreading her 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 words, all this. And again, when we get into all this this stuff, there's a line in here where he says, uh, um, um, "It is as though a dry spring was suddenly full of water." Oh, I was yeah. like, "Oh." Yeah, yeah, oh. <laughs> I'm like, oh, creepy old man there. They That's could have it. done without that. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> things I don't need to know about grandpa's problems. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, and then and then you have this, and again, this thing that uh, is, is is kind of funny, um, which I, I I don't think most folks uh, would recognize. I certainly didn't. Is um, the wheel fades in um, here um, as they're seeing all of this, um, and it's literally I think it's literally the wheel of fate. You know, their, their fates are now being set. Um, but then uh, you get this, this sequence of, um, of all of these, oops, um, well, that, that, that went weirdly, um, of all of these uh, ox carts uh, going through and, like, driving people off of the thing. Bridge. Yeah, yeah. knocking yeah. everybody out into the water. Yeah. <laughs> knocking them around. Um, which is a, a scene in A Castle in the Sky. Um, that a very similar scene happens to that with the uh, yeah. the, the, the um, uh, Dola's car driving along and all the people diving off into the river. Um, but ox carts are for the nobility. You choose oxen because they are slow and because they're deliberate and because they have a nice deliberate pace. Right. You do not drive oxen this fast. <laughs> That's kind of the joke. Is <laughs> This is a really dumb thing to do. But they're also smitten by Kaguya, the, the, yeah. the witching powers. Yeah. Um, in fact, we have even more evidence of that. Um, when she receives all the men, um, there's this wonderful shot. Um, this is the one. Um, let, me, let me start it here. Um, where she is telling them kind of what, what she wants out of them. Um, and we have this long sequence <clears throat> of them sitting there. Um which appears to be completely still. I'm actually going to play it here. I think I can get away with it because this is, this is all playing. The butterfly. The butterfly. Yeah. What does the butterfly represent in Japanese folklore? Spirits? What? Um, um, as I recall, from, and I'm actually forgetting now, um, as I recall, um, it represents um, bewitchment. And in the marginalia for this on the storyboard, he said, um, it is like they're, it, it is like the, the five men are on some form of LSD. Sure. Um, yeah. Wow. Be which, kind of, um, you can kind of see it, um, because they're all being bewitched by Kaguya. They're just, her, the way she interacts with them is just causing them to go, sure, I'll, I'll go across the ocean for this thing for you. That makes total sense. <laughs> Um, you know, I'll do all this crazy stuff, um, but of course I will go on a quest. Right, <laughs> but of course, a butterfly flipping along is all you need to know to connect all these dots, right? Ugh. Uh, um, so yeah, so you get this, this retelling of this, this this classic bit of the myth. Um, we all decide to go go and do that, um, um, and so Kaguya now feels free because she solved the the, the problem, right? It's great. <laughs> She's delayed the problem. Exactly. Um, uh, and so she, she gets her, her last moment of freedom, frankly, um, and she decides to go out and, and view the cherry blossoms. Um, and granted, this was a thing where, you know, noble ladies would go out to view the cherry blossoms, one of the few ways in which they could get out. Um, so it was not that, you know, um, not that crazy for her to want to do that. Um, and so she gets out and we get, oh, gosh, Ghibli just flexing. Oh, yeah. this is just it's beautiful, stinking beautiful, stunningly gorgeous, <laughs> amazing. Um, and uh, Kagi is able to, to to play around. I also love what they do here with her hair. Um, how it's it's just ruffled enough to have that sort of cuteness to it. Yeah. Um, without being just completely unkempt. Um, so she looks just just adorable. Um, and then she she dances around under the tree. Um. And I love how it's it's interrupted by these peasants, who come up and just bow to her and skedaddle. And she realizes, oh, right, 
Like, this is my place now. Um, and she decides, okay, it's time to go back. It's, you know, it's time to go. She's no longer of the people. She's moved up into a different class and putting her, putting the hat on to hide her face, too. Like, yeah. You know. And so she goes on from one depressing moment into another. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because here's where she sees Sanmaru. Um, and again, that sort of bewitching gaze. But yeah, the, I love how long this scene lasts. Because it lasts a little longer than is comfortable, which is absolutely the way that, that would work in real life. You just see each other and you're like, Given the circumstances, you'd think he would keep running. Yeah. Mm. Well, that, that was his, that was her power. And I think right. she realized that as he was getting the beat down. Yeah. 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 And she kind of stopped him mm -hmm. from getting right. out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of her fault. Not really her fault, but, you know. Not, yeah. 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 Um, uh, and that is, I think, almost the central, one of the central themes of the film is this idea that Kaguya by who she is and, and how she's interacting with people is changing her world and is interacting with people. And so she, she cannot live as a completely free spirit just enjoying life. She also has to take big responsibility for her actions um, and, and, you know, um, uh, who she is and what she does. Um, um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Moving along. Um... um do, 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 do. Um, yeah, and then we get the whole those sequences where they're bringing back all of the the treasures they found. They're all fake. Oh, but I liked the part where she's in the garden and she's recreated the, the community yeah, in created, the garden. Yeah, yeah. You know that that shows you the place where she was mm -hmm. at least quite arguably the happiest that she has yeah. been mm -hmm. up to this point of the film. Yeah, um, it's it's a very sad moment in a way. It's it's, it's bittersweet. Yeah. Um, cause you realize she's yearning for something she kind of can't have. Um, and I think also the first time you see them, I, I now realize first time I see the movie, I love the scene. The second time the, the, the movie, I was like, oh, cause I know she's never going to get that back. Right. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, even if she could get back mm. to the community, what the impacts she is having in the capital with all yeah, these suitors right. showing <clears throat> Sudamaru already kind of likes her yeah there's also all the other guys yeah that she hangs out with absolutely so if you removed the royal attempt and just put her back to being a bamboo harvester would you have wrecked that community mm. because all these guys would have been circling around right. and competing with each other and doing ridiculous non-community kind of things right you know you know, transplant these five guys to those boys in the in the, the town. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? So she, it's terrible to say it, but she could have ended up destroying things inadvertently. Right. No matter where she was. Exactly. And it's like, um, which is, I think, kind of the point of heaven. The point that heaven is trying to make for her is that you don't belong here. Yeah. You know, this is only going to cause pain and frustration and, and, and anguish for you and everybody else. You need to leave, basically. Um, um, yeah, and so you have that, that, that whole sequence, which, again, funny. Um, you know, a lot of fun seeing all these people kind of hoisted on their own petards. And I did love, love that moment when he, he, he has the, uh, they find out what's going on, and he uh, just kind of, uh, see if I can get it to here. Um, yeah, where he just kind of, Grabs it, sneaks off, and goes, "Bye." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See ya. See ya. I, I almost expected a little, you know, Looney Tunes puff of smoke. As right. He ran off. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Heavens so, to Murgatroyd. Yeah. Right. It's stage left. <laughs> um, and she laughs because, because again, it is it is a, a ridiculous moment. Um, well, like the artisans, they're trying to get this letter yeah. to the lord of the house, <laughs> the house, and the guy's got a pole with a clamp on it, and the letter, and he's trying to hand it over. <laughs> like, what the heck is this? <laughs> I, I'm sure for the period of time that I'm, there must have been a restriction that you cannot touch something that well, somebody who is higher well, class I, than you I or something. I think he's trying to get it over a wall or something. You know, well, like what, offering or something like that. 
Well, what it what um, it was was that historically is that if you were of nobility or importance like mm. that, like the grandfather was putting himself up to be, if you one of the one of the social rules is that you if you can get a request or a letter in, it's almost like the Godfather on the wedding day. Mm. Is if you can get that, he is obligated to actually read the oh, letter. Gotcha. So that's why they they like swarm the attendant girl, and that's why they keep like they go at every single gate, and they're literally they literally are trying to get things over there because if they can get it over, then the, the person is actually obligated to 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 read it. But again, you're not supposed to touch, you know, the the other person. There's actual historical accounts where people would make dummy arrows, blunted arrows, so that wow. they could shoot into the ox cars, into the carriages, so that the person would have to, you know, can you imagine this arrow comes in through, through, the, through the, you know, side, <laughs> thunk, a little nose arrow. Oh, right, you know, right, you know, <laughs> right, you know I love you it, you it. it. <laughs> so, so that's their thing is that, like, you know, because you remember the guys are st- are actually not even allowed to be in until mm. the grandfather lets them in right and, whole, and they have to be they're like please read the letter please read the letter please read the letter mm-hmm. you know and he finally takes it um and, and then once he does he's not kind of obligated to do something like and it should be pointed out like you know it would be very easy in a story like this for him to go oh well whatever but he's like no this right. is outrageous like this is not cool like yeah. you were right to bring this in to me um you yeah. So yeah, um, he, he deals with it appropriately. Um, yeah, and then again, more of the, uh, the, the 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 fireproof silk. <laughs> you see the Kaguya fire going, rat fur. Fire rat fur. <laughs> like, wow. You see Kaguya going, I know what to ask for here. Uh, <laughs> here's how to test this. Um, um, and then... Uh, and I love that for a moment, it, it, yeah, it's fine. It's all good. Like it, it, it's, it was it's, actually sparkly. Yeah. It's looking great. <laughs> and then not so much. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, just to get serious for a moment, um, this is one of the weird things about fire. Um, fire is really hard to tell when it's actually like setting things on fire. Um, I just watched a video on YouTube of some people who smothered a fire with a blanket and waited like 10 seconds and then started moving the blanket and the fire just came right back up again. Um, it, it's it's very easy for a fire to not look like what, what you think it is. So fire is Wasn't that the whole fire triangle? There's oxygen, temperature, and fuel. Mm-hmm. So right. it's like if you can knock out one of those, then you can you can affect how the fire works. Right. And obviously a blanket had just enough oxygen. Right. That exactly. once you pulled it off, it was like, okay, I'm still here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, that's why when the when the fire, uh, you know, come out, you know, when the the fire uh, firemen come into your building, when your building goes, you know, the alarms go off, they have to check all the apartments is because the fire hides like that. Yeah. It's, it's in the you know it's in the walls or you know things like that. Yeah. Um, and so we get that, and, and, and fire is pain. Fire is pain. pain. Yeah. Um, um, we get all of the wonderfully ridiculous. Um, uh, quests that folks are on now. Um, yeah, that dude's quest the on the boat. Yeah. <laughs> he, you know, wow. Yeah. I have yeah. mad props for that dude. And, <laughs> right. Even though he's like a total coward, mm. he like at least he's like in terrible circumstances trying to actually do this thing. I'm like, mm. wow. You yeah. didn't just go like shyster some people to make you a pretty branch with some <laughs> bobbles on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And he actually thought he saw it. Yeah. 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 And it's what I love about kind of the, the progression of this is that now it's serious, right? Like now people are actually putting their lives in danger for Kaguya. Like, hmm. Hmm. Yeah. And then and the, that was the sailor and the guy pulls his sword out. He's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> he grabs him and then gets hit by lightning and bends up, falls in the water. Like, oh, ouchie! Lightning rod, it wasn't exactly. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and then. Um, and then comes the poetry, um, and uh, boy, it almost works. Um, the guy comes in he's with all pre- the words. He's pretty slick. He's very slick. Oh, those tricks. Um, and, and you know, again, full props to him. And uh, it's interesting how I do think there's a little bit of the, of the Bishonen in him. Of the, he is the Otome game character, 
right? He, he's, he's a, you know, <laughs> he's the guy coming in with, you know, let me protect you, uh, you know, high school yeah. girl. Um, and uh, he's, he's got all the, all the marks, but then she comes up with the right test, which is, you know, what if I don't look the way you accept me to? Um, and yep, no, oh. just, nope, nope. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome that was a great moment um, and again I love how Takahata builds up to it because you're like oh has she cracked like it looks like she's cracked and then we just cut to the you know the reveal um, <laughs> great stuff um, it was very Tales of Genji yes very Tales of Genji yeah. um, and then we have our death yes um, Which I laughed. I laughed. Yeah. I can't. <laughs> I can't I laughed. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh my goodness. Well, I mean, I laughed without realizing. And then they go, and he broke his back. I'm like, ha, oh. Yeah. Um. <laughs> That's the thing is you're like, okay, clearly this is, you know, goof number five. Um, yeah. And then it becomes less so. Um, well, the one who doesn't die is like, you know, the master shogun on the boat, <laughs> right. where he should have drowned, got hit by lightning. Mm-hmm. And no, the one who dies is the idiot who doesn't understand how to use a ladder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's uh-huh. like, what is all the hook and pulley and everything else you're doing? And you fall into a pot. Mm-hmm. Like, you're really? Yep. yep. Darwin took into effect. And that, yeah, yeah. Darwin Award winner. Um, huh. And... And I think that's one of the interesting things about it is that there there is an abs- aspect of the absurdity and how he should have realized how absurd it was. Yeah. Yeah. But didn't. And and he died. Um uh gosh, yeah. He uh, died doing what he loved. Something stupid. Ed, you know. <laughs> Edo era jackass, basically is what that is. <laughs> um Yes. <laughs> there you go, there you go. Um and so Kaguya has her kind of breakdown, and she realized she kind of killed a guy. Yeah. And she didn't didn't really, but there there is an aspect of that. Um, and again, this is where you realize, oh, this isn't just about all the other things. She, she realizes that she has a culpability in her sort of charm of guys, um, and uh, uh, yeah, like it's 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 not good. Well, recognizing that Sudamoru gets gets the snot beat out of him mm. because he stopped too long to stare at her. Yeah. Now all these chuckleheads, one guy actually dies trying mm-hmm. to do a stupid quest for the thing yeah. he promised. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whereupon we meet um, Kaiji. No. Um, the Emperor. Um, with Mr. No, Mr. No Neck. M- Mr. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Chin. Um, so apparently when this aired on Japanese television a couple of years back... Um, uh, the Emperor's chin became a meme. <laughs> um, that is a wow. 69 degree angle, apparently. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a very <laughs> very acute angle. Um, huh. It's a very 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 sharp angle, um, so to speak. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's 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 kind of ridiculous, um, which is again very intentional. And here's again where I think Takahata is being too smart for his audience because Kaguya here delivers the line about if you make me do this, I will commit suicide. And it's a very serious moment, except if Takahata assumes you now realize it's impossible. Yeah. And the Kage is kind of bluffing. And she's basically trying to push her dad's buttons to say, no, I'm, I'm putting my foot in the sand. And I think she means it, but also, I think there's you know, there's at least a part of her that knows it's not possible. It's not actually going to happen. And and that's you know. And does her father know that? that? Her father doesn't know that. that. You know. Right. Mm. Her father doesn't know that. Their mother doesn't know that. We sure as hell don't know. Right. That <laughs> we didn't. We totally missed the context. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Which I mean, does she? She knows she broke the dish, and she is aware of the the run back to to the community to the old house but is she fully functionally aware of the fact that she actually died in the snow there and that this is a reset or is she just kind of like it's not entirely clear so she's got some suspicion i, 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 I she's not yeah, i I, you know? I think it's more like that yeah, yeah. I, I, so I think her, it's middle ground yeah. her threat you know it could be one of these things where she goes fine i'll slip my wrist right 
Huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! One more time. What happened? Um, yeah. But I think you know. I think she's at a point where that is a a full on legitimate statement. Yeah. Not realizing the fact that it's, it is an impossibility, mm-hmm. which we yeah. should know, apparently. <laughs> yes. Because... Really. Well, just wait. And and you're absolutely right, Jay. Um, the the emperor is drawn comically, ridiculously. Um, he is drawn to look ridiculous. And I think that is kind of the purpose, is that, and again, this is one of those things that, um, if this was a period piece, there is no way in hell you would do this. Um, incredibly disrespectful. Um, but it is pointing out that the emperor, in this case, is a buffoon, basically, um, in the context of the story. Um, well, I mean, certainly at the time, the shogunate was where the locus of power was. Mm-hmm. Yep. So the the emperor was always the emperor to be revered and respected, mm-hmm. but the emperor didn't really have a lot to do, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, except grab women from behind. Um, yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. The look honest. on her face was just oh. like, oh yeah. god, um, it's pretty creepy, right? Yeah, like him doing this. And on the other hand, not to excuse it, but. He's the emperor. I'm sure he does this all the time, and I'm sure no girl refuses him. With his many wives. Right, exactly. Yeah. That was a thing back then. Um, and so I'm wives sure, and concubines. And so I'm sure he, you know, he spent his entire life doing this and facing zero consequences whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure he recognizes that it's a, shall we say, bold move. Um, but he's like, it'll be fine. You know, whatever. No big deal. Um... And there's another thing in here which I wanted to see if I could I could find. Um, I'm going to see if I can uh, advance it a little bit and and show it. Um, because another little thing that Takahata threw in here. Um, which, by that point, has any man, while mm-hmm. Kaguya was, was achieving uh, adulthood, mm-hmm. um, has any man but for Sutamaru, who is not her father, touched her? I can't think of any. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, so this now is like a very, like, you know, years have passed, mm-hmm. and now here's this adult man who is grabbing her yep. non-consensually. Mm-hmm. And it's like, wow, that's just like, huh. It's extremely bold, which is, I think, one of the reasons why she manifests another power and just, you yeah. know, just disappears. Ghosts out. Ghosts out, yeah, exactly. Um, and it's interesting how he's like, oh, um, never mind then. Uh, or not, never mind, but okay, I'm leaving. I, I understand something else is going on here, but I'll be back, and, you know, you are mine. Um, oh, that's the other thing. Um, notice I just that- love that casual that casualness of, yeah, I, 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 I own you. Right, yes. That's very much his. his You're mine, I own you. Um, so you notice his headdress? I'm the emperor. <laughs> yeah. Um, his really weird headdress with the two little, like, black things heading, you know, coming down behind him. Um, what does that remind you of? This did not connect to me until Kata pointed it out. A swallow's tail? What? A dragonfly. There's a little dragonfly wings. Because it turns out, um, and I'll see if I can get a better image of it. Um, that's slightly better. Um, um, so it, it's, it's meant to look like a dragonfly. Um, there is a legend that the islands of Japan were formed by two dragonflies together and very much enjoying their company. Oh. Huh. And apparently, you're supposed to know that and get that context from his headdress in this scene. Oh. Yeah. That is the implication of what he is trying, you know. Mm-hmm. Again, the Encyclopedia Galactica. <laughs> exactly, yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, what so. What the hell? Oh, Takahata. Anyway, um, we get a gorgeous movie out of it anyway. Um, uh, so, yeah, so he, he kind of pieces out. Um, and this gives you a whole new appreciation. Um, okay, I do love this scene where... Um, kind of the truth will out, and she explains the whole thing about the moon. And her father says, um, um, I've just been trying to make you happy. And she says this line, um, um, 
your happiness, has, my happiness has been very difficult for me to bear. And like, if that doesn't sum up you know, mm -hmm. what her father has been doing yep. to her, um, just perfectly, um, this just isn't what she wanted. Um, not that she really knew what she wanted, but still, you know, this clearly was not right for her. Um, and as I said before, he's charging forward with the concept that this is the greatest thing a, a girl could ever want. Mm -hmm. This must be what she's going to be happy, and this must right. be why heaven sent her. Mm -hmm. it's like, yeah. Oh. And this is where I think that, where that gender studies thing comes in, where this is clearly a theme of the film, is pushing these expectations on this girl that just do not match her at all. Yeah. Um, um, you need the consent of the governed. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Um... Uh, and yeah, so we get, this is the pointer scene, right? The, okay, we need to explain the, the backstory and the plot to the audience. Um, Why bother? Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that's, it's that's a little late in the game <laughs> now, hey? Yeah. <laughs> we got the opening scene, so now we have to have the scene in the, in the beginning, or in the, in the end. Um, 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 and so, yeah, and so this provides a lot more context um, for this um, uh, bit later on. Um, where she goes back to her village and she meets the Maru again. Yeah. Because now we know that she is actually meeting him. This is not a dream sequence. She yeah. actually goes back and has this conversation. Um, and... While well, Sudamaru's wife Sudamaru, and child... child. Yes. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Absolutely. You guys go on ahead. I'm just going to run off with this nice looking girl with the kimonos on yeah what yeah that's the thing is that when i first saw this as a dream sequence i was like oh, okay that's what's in his heart right that's what he originally wanted it's not what he has now but that was kind of his his dream no no like he's ready yeah he's gonna yeah, throw, he's, throw he's, aside he's the family <laughs> now again in fairness this could be her charm basically working on him this could be like the butterfly right where he's on lsd right now basically um, and this is just what, this is just, he, he's being bewitched, um, by her. But yeah, this is, this could have happened. Um, he, he could have run off with her. Um, and it's interesting how it's, it's her that kind of t turns him away. Um, cause she realizes this, no, this can't be this, we, we've gone too far. I've gone too far. Um, and it's just not going to happen. Um, but, we know by this point that the countdown's already started. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But so she, I mean, no matter how she feels or doesn't feel, it's too late. Yeah. But she gives him this wonderful moment of flight. Yeah. Um, flying to the moon again. This this gorgeous sequence um, of them flying through the air um, and doing all this stuff. Um, Which this makes much more sense as an LSD sequence. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right. That's the thing. Is it? Apparently, she literally does this with him, physically. Um, and nobody else seems to... Hey, look, people! No, no, yeah, uh, totally, no, that's no. fine. Um, I mean, granted, Totoro, right? They're, they're flying around on Totoro, whatever. Um, yeah. And then they fly to the moon. Fly me to the moon. Mm -hmm. Say it. Um, whereupon, she's kind of hit by this moonbeam of... Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, you know, and she, she, uh, she can't say that. She, starts, she falls down to Earth. Um, because the moon will have her. Um, um, and so he, you know, he wakes up and we, we've rewound time again. Um, and, uh, the moon does not allow this, this, this will not be. Um, and so he showed up and, and so actually in the storyboard again, what they say here is that, um, um, he, he picks up his son, um, and avoids the eyes of his wife. Yeah, he's going to catch hell later on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and th w one of the things is that she notices something. Like, she notices something is wrong, but doesn't say anything. It's like, mm hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, whereupon the moon people come in? The moon are knights. The moon they are, he they uh... are here. <laughs> um... <laughs> Sorry, what Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, <laughs> I'm doing it as hard as I possibly can. So what's... <laughs> I cannot see this scene normally anymore 
after seeing Land of the Lustrous. Land of the Lustrous. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly That's what went through my mind. I'm like, uh-huh. hey, here we go again. <laughs> yeah, ready for the fight, the, all the stories that come out. Yep. Um, um, and so they come in playing the jauntiest uh, song. Yeah. Because heaven is pleasant and wonderful. Um, and they play the song, and of course everyone goes to sleep. And holy heck, it's Buddha! It's Buddha. <laughs> yeah. Like it's it's not just this this Bodhisattva it's not the thing. God or whatever. It's just it's, it's no it's, it's Buddha. You know it's full on Buddha. It's it, well, I get that. Um, it's ah sorry. That didn't Brent work out. Brent pulls out the Naruto book. It's, it's yeah, Naruto. Naruto. Yeah, no. no, it's not. Um, <laughs> come on. I'm throwing things everywhere. They just did not put that on the cover anywhere, apparently. It's, yeah, they didn't. Damn it, never mind. Um, I pulled out every where's the, copy where's of the part Buddha where you're I just have. throwing books like this <laughs> out of the bookshelf? <laughs> um, but no, it's literally, you know, the guy, Buddha, um, showing up to, to take Kagavi away. Um, Whereupon everyone falls, falls asleep. Um, because, of course, like, they're not going to fight, right? They're, they're Buddhists. You right, fight. Yeah. Buddha. Right. Um, uh, well, hence when they're firing arrows, the arrows become flowers. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, oh, well, there's a, there's, there's a symbol for you. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then the little fairies come in to 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 grab Kaguya, um, and she's pulled out like a freaking zombie. That was that was like the one creepy animation part that yeah. I, I was I was kind of like, uh, uh, all right, why are we? Doing yeah. This. Why? Why is that? Augie, a smash. <laughs> well, I thought initially she was like holding out her hands to her mother, and then kind of being dragged away, uh, which right. could be. And then she's kind of stuck in that 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 uh, uh, that pose the entire time. Um. Uh, and then she's taken up, and you can see how for a little while she's okay with it. Um. And initially, when she she goes, she's ready for all of this, uh, and then she begs for a moment. For, for one moment, um, with, with her with her parents again, um, and is granted that, um, thanks to the children, who come out and kind of interrupt the moment, and yep. and, and pause everything. Um, and you get this this moment with, 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 with all of them crying. And what I find so fascinating is how everyone in heaven is like, just stop, like, like just, just, Put the cloak on well, and, yeah. and just forget, and let's go. Let's go home. Yeah, go on. you, let's you know, go. you're prolonging this. Really, is what's going on here. They're still going to be sad when you leave, right? You know, um, we we're, came we're... all this way. We're down in this dingy <laughs> little place called <laughs> Earth. Earth. You're getting all emotional. Just put the robe on so we can get back. It's to a work. hole. The car is running. A hole. The yeah. car's running. Yeah. <laughs> These clouds. They only get so many times. kilometers per you know for, per gallon. We got to keep going. <laughs> Um, and that's the thing. Flying it's, clouds are cheap. Yo, <laughs> um, we gassed up the cloud just to come down here for you. Um, um, and I gotta say though, I do feel like this is kind of um, Isao Takahata's middle finger to Buddhism, um, because it really feels like what he's saying here. And I, I may be reading too much into this. Is you know when you achieve enlightenment. All is well, and you have no attachments, and no emotions, and no connection to anything, and it's all fine. Um, but it disconnects you from actual human experience. Um, you, you, you get this just sort of alien, you know, neutral. Right. But none of the highs, none of the lows. Um, and so Kagia gets just this, you know, um, just that. And, you know, everyone's left kind of sad as a result of it, um, which he just goes away, flies away. Um, I personally believe um, the ending is intentionally um, um, uncertain as to whether what this means is that she has completely forgotten and she's going to go and, and be there, or because she does look back, that she's going to keep some memory of that. Well, when she describes a song early on mm-hmm. and it, that she hadn't been singing in the mm-hmm. village, and you know she's explaining to her parents that the moon is coming, and she's telling the story about the 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 reason why she was singing that song was because she remembered it was a song that was being sung on the moon by this one woman 
who had done the same thing. Right. And, you know, this is the memory that she has. She doesn't have, she doesn't remember everything, but she knows that she was there and that there's some longing that she wanted. And so when they put the cloak of forgetfulness on her, you know, on Kaguya, and she, you know, she blanks out. And then she, and then, you know, of course, the, you know, the wonderful Sky Chariot Lincoln Town car goes back up. <laughs> and they're going up. And she has that moment where she's like, oh, and she looks behind her. Yeah. She doesn't fully understand what she's, why she's looking right. back. Mm-hmm. She doesn't fully understand, but that's the story. That's, that, that's going to be the continuance of part of her punishment is that she will always know that there was something there. Mm-hmm. Something went on there. Yep. And well, she's back on the moon. How about this? It, it's terrible as it mm-hmm. occurs to me at this juncture. <laughs> um, to achieve nirvana, you have to get rid of worldly desires. Mm-hmm. You have mm-hmm. to find. You have to get beyond all that. Mm-hmm. Kaguya is still a young woman. Mm-hmm. At one point, we see an an older woman mm-hmm. who knows this song from Earth. Right. What if that's Kaguya? as an adult and that oh, she saying. as an adult retained the memory of this mm. he's sent back to be punished oh interesting and repeats the cycle mm-hmm. it's the reincarnation cycle, cycle kind of thing because she has a worldly desire yeah and she mm-hmm. is not free of that so she can't she's not on the sevenfold path to enlightenment yeah she's got a she has a defect mm-hmm. in that so she has to return to get rid of those worldly desires. Which would explain the star baby. Yes. Mm-hmm. It is all a cycle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know. That should, that should be um, on that reincarnation train. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, Okada claimed that this is part of evidence, his evidence, as to why the Tale of Princess Kaguya is Isao Takahata's remake of Puella Magica Madoka Magica. Unfortunately, I don't know what he means by that. I don't know where he was going with that. I just, okay, sure, whatever. But, hey, great. Who knows? Uh, yeah, I... Sure. I, um... But I mean, sad you... moments, uh, sure. interesting introspective moments, mm-hmm. losing your head. Yeah, yeah, um, very much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, mm, so yeah. yeah. Um, so stay tuned past the end credits for the introduction of Cube. Uh, kidding. <laughs> kidding. Um, yeah. No. <laughs> Soul stones, anyone? No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> but that's the tale of the Kaguya. Um, uh, a, a gorgeous kind of weird movie. I loved the art style. Yeah. It yeah. Was just. Yeah. Oh. I want to see if I can it's, go it's, back. It's to... it's 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 I've had I now have to. I was saying this to to Brent last night. I now have to change my top ten again on the my top ten anime because it's all been blown to heck and gone now. Um, so I have to fit this one in there <clears throat> primarily because of the animation style, which I. It, Completely adored, yeah. yeah. And um, and I enjoyed the story of what I thought I was watching, <laughs> not what I thought I was supposed to be understanding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but you feel smarter now, right? For Takahata having explained all this to you, now um, you're you're yeah. better informed. So it's all good. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> it makes me embarrassed at my own lack of knowledge. <laughs> All the things I should have known watching this. Right. Yeah. Um, absolutely, Madoff, that is one of the other interesting things, is that it's, it's fascinating how this, like, the backgrounds feel like Ghibli, but also the style is so distinctive that it feels like it's unique within Ghibli. Yeah. Uh, which yeah. is really lovely. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. If you're looking for something uh, closer to the style, um, My Neighbors the Amadas um, actually has oh, a yeah. somewhat similar style um, yeah. as being sort of sketchy and pastel. Um, but definitely not, not like this. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, I'm sure there's less context. Far different. Yeah, yeah. different. <laughs> yes, you know, Yamadas, Yamadas are actually all Buddha. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> Yamada is basically Charlie Brown, you know, and then all of this—it's crazy. Um, any final thoughts? 
Yeah. Glad I finally got to see it. Yeah. Uh, um, it, had, it had been on a list for a while as the one of mm-hmm. one of the films you should see mm-hmm. from either your discussions or uh, Triad. I think one year had a films you should see that. That's how I ended up watching Angel's Egg. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, so this is on one of those lists. So I, right. I, I I think that if even if you don't have ability with animation, this will definitely get you interested in two styles. Yeah. And, you know, and different styles and, and different things and, and a better understanding of flow of movement, particularly with some of those more active sequences in this, which I, oh. I, I, I mean, it's, I can't do it justice. I can't describe my yeah. descriptions. Cannot do it justice. You have to watch to understand, and I, I don't even need to tell you when it's going to happen. You'll, you'll know it exactly yeah. when you see it, and you're just going to be just sitting there. And your jaw's going to be on the floor because they're just like it's not like anything else you have ever seen. The way Kaguya moves as a baby, yeah, yeah. is perfect. Like, how do you get it that perfect? It's that, that whole five minute that, that what seemed like five minute scene of of her just rolling around yeah like, like a baby would yeah mm. well i imagine studio time it was like hey everybody memo from the top can everybody bring their babies in <laughs> uh, on like wednesday <laughs> and we're just gonna have them sit around in, like the in the sixth tommy room and just let them do stuff we'll have some toys and stuff but just we just want to watch them mm-hmm. like <laughs> pretty much hey if miyazaki-san can sit out and watch girls in short skirts hey you know, there you go. whatever makes it work. <laughs> cool. It's about the art. It's a, yes. <laughs> All right, that will do it. Um, we're going to take a quick break for just a few minutes, and then we'll be right back. Uh, we'll talk about more modern anime and the latest anime news. We'll be right back. Woohoo! In a bit. <laughs> 